Hello Bronco Nation. I had to jump on the internet today and explain my two cents on this whole Tim Tebow, Kyle Orton mess. I cannot believe that I got a deal through a lockout, but on top of it, I have to see bloggers day in and day out tell me why they think Kyle Orton should be our starting quarterback. Yeah, 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 I know about the 3,000 yards. Yeah, 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 I know about the 20 touchdowns. But Kyle Orton is terrible in the red zone. He's terrible in games that count. And look at his last nine starts as a Denver Bronco. Eight losses, one win. And then let's look at his last two starts, which got Kyle Orton in trouble with me, and that's when I said, Said enough. I can't support this boring quarterback anymore. Kyle Orton, his last two games, was 28 of 69 for about a 40% passing uh, completion ratio. His rating was about 36%. He had three interceptions, zero touchdowns. This guy was a complete bust. Then we bring in Tim Tebow, the guy who didn't get a practice with the first team. The guy who's a rookie. He hasn't been in the NFL seven years. And what's Tim Tebow do? He completes 40 of 81 passes for almost 50% with a quarterback rating of 82. Yes, he had three interceptions, just like Bozo Orton, but he happened to have four touchdown passes and three rushing touchdowns. Now, why does this debate even happen? In? I can't stand it when I see John Fox or John Elway say, we've got to let him shoot it out in practice. We don't know who our guy is. It's Tim Tebow. You cannot grow up a Bronco fan watching John Elway with eyes in the back of his head, scrambling around, being your quarterback, and then sit back and watch Mr. Boring, Kyle Orton. Now let's talk about some of the tangible and intangible things about our quarterback. All right, Kyle Orton, is this your leader? Is this who the quarterback of the Denver Broncos really is? He's a putz. He's not exciting. He's not a leader. He's not charismatic. He is not our answer. Now let's look at Tim Tebow. Oh yeah, I know. Some of you don't like it, get a little uncomfortable that maybe he likes God. I don't know. It isn't about God. Don't you realize a former Denver Bronco was stabbed this year? A current Denver Bronco was stabbed this year. We have somebody that's going to trial one of our defensive backs. We got DJ Williams, our linebacker, who's had, I can't even count the number of DUIs. And we're mad at Tim Tebow, who likes to support the community, who's a good role model. Come on, people. Now let's talk about the running game. Hello? Our number one running back, no Sean Moreno. You want to know how many touchdowns he had? Five touchdowns in 2010. What did Tim Tebow have? Six. And played, I don't know, a third of the time? And what about average yards per carry? Tim Tebow had like, uh, it was like 6.4 yards per carry. No Sean Moreno, our number one running back, our number one first rounder, four yards per carry. Why is this debate even happening? And then I look around the rest of the NFL and I say, hey, what about McCoy? Colt McCoy goes to the Browns, his first rookie year has a 74% quarterback rating. Mark Sanchez, perhaps you heard of Mr. Hard Knocks, New York Jet, 75% quarterback rating. And then the, the great and almighty Sam Bradford with a 75, no, 76.5% quarterback rating. How about Tim Tebow, who we've got this big controversy about, 82% uh, quarterback rating. I don't get it, people. What was the Broncos' most exciting play in 2010? Tim Tebow comes in against the Raiders and busts through the middle for 40 yards, a touchdown, the longest touchdown run in Broncos history by a quarterback, and he had been, what, out there like a quarter? Kyle Orton, you know what, Kyle Orton? It's not your fault. You're slow. It's not your fault you can't see people behind you. It's not your fault that you didn't come with natural leadership ability. We've got, we've got to give Tim Tebow a break here. Tim Tebow is our answer. Guess what? Tim Tebow comes in at the end of the year. He delivers. I don't know why so many people are against giving this guy a shot, but I tell you what. Denver Brass, I hope you guys are paying attention to this part right now. You will have empty parking lots again in 2011 and 2012 and so on and so forth if you go with Kyle Orton. This is a game of entertainment. This is about winning. This is about courage and strength. You can't have Elway and Plummer and Cutler guys that have run around in the backfield and have Kyle Orton. Kyle Orton is 31 flavors of boring people. I don't hate the guy. He was not the reason the Denver Broncos lost in 2010, but Kyle Orton didn't do anything to help him get out of that mess.
I'm for Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow, more rushing touchdowns than no Sean Moreno. Tim Tebow, better than Cole McCoy, Mark Sanchez, and Sam Bradford. Yeah, I know. I'm not an NFL expert. Yes, his, his pass is a little goofy. His stance is a little goofy. But guess what? The guy's a winner. You see what happened to Jay Cutler in the, when the playoffs were on the line? Jay Cutler goes out with the wimpiest injury in NFL history. Tim Tebow, you go look it up on YouTube, folks. Tim Tebow finishes a high school game with a broken leg. It's about courage. It's about intangibles. And go back and look at that 40-yard touchdown. You can find that on YouTube, too. Look at Vickerson. Look at Robert Ayers. The defenders on the sidelines getting all excited about that play Tim Tebow made. Tim Tebow is magic. He is terrific, Tim. And you guys are crazy. I will not go and watch another Bronco game live and in person. I will not spend $200. I will not in the house, not in the rain, not on a train. I will not watch Kyle Orton. No, I won't. Tim Tebow's our answer. So stop the madness. I'd like to say God bless the Bronco Nation. God bless Tim Tebow. And God bless America.